Hi, this is George with NS345. Today I am mixing the bass guitar. If you've been to any musical concerts, or maybe a religious house of worship, or just at a, I don't know, at a park, or at a, at a bar, or anywhere, there are two things that you always notice, and those things always have to sound really good. One is the drums, and one is the bass guitar. They have to sound tight together. For example, when the kick is kicking, the bass has to be kicking with it, okay? And it does that so that they can be tight. If that low end is tight between the kick and the bass, that's great. If the rhythm is even tighter, that's even more gravy. Okay, but today I want to talk about the low end on a mix. The low end is very important. It's a fundamental element of any mix. One of the things that has really helped me mixing low end has been the subtlety of mixing the low end. In the past, when I rushed through a mix, I would hurry up, put a plug in, boost that low end because I wanted to hear it. And I went from having a really, really loud low end to a really boomy low end to a muddy low end to now you can barely hear my bass, but I feel it sounds cleaner and it sounds better. When I first started mixing, I used to over-process the bass. I applied all kinds of processing, our bass to boost the low end to make it sound full. At least that's what I thought. I used to use EQ, anything that I could do to boost that low end so that to make sure that people knew that I could mix the low end. But that's not the case anymore. What I've learned about the low end is that you have to be subtle. The sweet spot can be found through subtlety. Here is my secret. I have none. I'm just going to use my ears. I'm going to boost the bass to where I can barely hear it. Bring it back a little bit. If I hear anything nasty or ugly, I'm going to try and remove it with some EQ. If I hear some good frequencies that I need, I'm going to try and boost them. Okay, nothing fancy, really nothing fancy. So let me see what I can do. One thing to keep in mind is that the bass is all over the drum microphones, on the vocal microphones, it's coming out through every microphone. That's gonna play to my advantage because I'm gonna take advantage of that. And I know that I'm gonna get a good bass sound out of this mix. It already sounds really good. So let's just see what I can do to this. Let me listen to it real quick. There is the bass. It sounds really nice. One thing that I don't want to forget, if you remember, there were two tracks. There was an amp track, or there were two tracks, a bass DI track, and there was another track where a microphone was placed in front of the cab, in front of an amp, I chose to delete that one and just keep the DI because the amp was really not adding anything to the flavor of the mix or improving the bass sound. So I thought the DI sounded much better and I'm just going to work with the DI track. I'm going to bring in my SSL channel. I would like the audio to hit the filters first. Then I want the audio to hit the EQ. And lastly, I want it to hit the dynamics. The way I can accomplish that is by doing the following. If I hit split, now I've told the plugin to route the audio first through the filters. Okay, if I hit the dynamics to channel out, now I've told the plugin that I want filters first, EQ next, dynamics third. Okay, let's move on. Okay, here's what I've done really quick. I did hear a little bit of boominess. I did hear a little bit of uh, low end, sorry, low mid buildup, but I'm not hearing enough top end to cut through the mix. So the bass is a little bit buried. 
I added 5 dBs at 10K. I added 2 dBs at 4K. I took out 1 dB at 250. And I added 1 dB at 60. I added the 1 dB at 60 just to bring out a little bit of the body. I took out 1 dB at 250 just to get rid of some of the muddiness. I added 2 dBs at about 4K just to add a little bit of attack. And then to add more presence, I added 5 dBs. And the reason why I chose those frequencies is because I'm familiar with them. So I knew exactly where to go. There is no formula. This is just what I'm used to doing. And it's sounding okay to me right now. So let's hear it in solo real quick. Okay, it's very subtle, very subtle. So now I'm gonna apply some compression and I'm probably gonna get about six dB of compression just to make it smooth and consistent. It's not so dynamic to where I have to apply crazy compression, but I find that, that the SSL plugin does really nice with about six dBs of gain reduction. Here I go. Set my threshold to minus 18. I'll start where it uh, four to one. I'll bring this to the fastest release and I'll do it on fast attack. Okay, I'm gonna add one dB of gain makeup. Now I'm gonna add a couple of more dBs on the 10K section. I'm going to take out the 1 dB that I added here. I'm going to do minus 1.5 at 250. Okay, I think that sounds good. Let's hear it engaged and bypass. So just maybe close your eyes for a second. I think that sounds really nice. Again, there's not a lot of dirt in this bass track. It sounds good. It sounds full. Now I'm going to add the Slate Virtual Tape Machine. I don't know much about this machine. I've never seen it in person or real life. But I know that this plugin, when you're using the, if you want some nice low end, you can use the 15 IPS, keep the bias on low, and then I just play with the machine type or the tape type, and I'll increase the input. The output is linked, so the output clamps down on the input, so it doesn't allow any gain to be added to the plugin. I'm going to bring up the floating meter so you can see what I'm doing, and so you can see that I'm not lying to you about the gain structure and the gain that this plugin could potentially add. Okay, so one thing, I don't know why, 
uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know the technicalities behind it, but I know that when I'm mixing the bass and I add this virtual tape machine and I increase the input and lower the output, I like it when the needle is hovering around zero. Uh, I feel like it's adding a bit of uh, good body to it, a bit of good harmonics, and I'm actually hearing the bass a little bit better. So let me do a quick AB. I'll close this plugins. You saw that I didn't add any gain. And I'm going to start with the plugins engaged, and then I'm going to bypass them, engage them, bypass them a few times so you can hear the difference. Okay, the difference is very subtle, so I'm going to do it in solo. There is a difference. Again, it's very subtle. And you see that my meter is not lying. The, the audio level is exactly where I started prior to applying the plugins. When I bypass the plugins, you kind of hear the bass just kind of drop out a little bit. The gain is the same. If you look at the meter, when I engage the plugins, the gain stays the same. The meter is right around the same area. But now you can hear the bass kind of just be more, it's more present. You now hear it a little bit better. And that's just in solo. And within the mix, I could also hear it. So you may not be able to hear it depending on what monitors you're, you're using or if you're hearing it on headphones. But check it out just one more time. think it sounds good if you have any questions let me know but I think subtlety is key in mixing this bass now this is different for every song that you mix it's never gonna be the same trust me I've had bass tracks where I had to beat the crap out of the EQ and just try and find the right tone for it this bass was obviously recorded really well good instruments good player uh, so I'm not having to do a lot of processing the takeaway from this video should be a subtle change can make a huge difference. Huge. Goodbye.